the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power oh come on it reaches come on church it reaches to the highest mountain glory to God and it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day to day he will never lose its power I love this verse right here. It suits, it suits my doubts and calms my fears. It dries all my tears. Glory to God. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose. It's power, and it reaches, come on, it reaches to the highest mountain, and it floats, and it floats to the lowest valley. Glory to God, the blood that gives me strength from day today come on it will never lose 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 it's power glory to God oh come on somebody praise him this morning come on come on somebody help us praise him this morning Father God, we thank you this morning. Me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith with your wonderful people here this morning as we begin a new series, Overcoming Adversity. Minister to them, encourage them, strengthen them. Let the Word of God bring direction, confirmation. Let the Word of God order their steps. Let them know from your scriptures, from your word, that everything's going to be all right. Let the word bring comfort. Let it bring healing. Let it bring deliverance. Let it bring breakthrough. Let it bring miracles. Let it give wisdom to your people, God. That David said the entrance of your word, it gives light and understanding unto the simple. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Have your way, God. Somebody say amen. Good morning to you, saints of the Most High. We are so happy to be jumping into a brand new series, Overcoming Adversity. I don't know about you, but I love the book of Ruth. It's impossible to, to read a book like Ruth and not come out with a stronger faith and strong encouragement because you can see the hand of God all through it amidst their adversity. Without any hesitation, let's jump into the book of Ruth. And on this morning, we are talking about God has a plan. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you a future and an expected end. Let's jump right into it. The book of Ruth chapter 1, verse 1 through 13. The Bible says, in the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. As much as we may not like it, sometimes in our lives, God have to use natural circumstances sometimes to get us to move 
from one geographical location to another so that his perfect will can be accomplished in and through our lives. Sometimes it isn't something that we had planned or it isn't something that we saw coming our way. But God knows all things. He knows all things. God can stop whatever he wants. But he didn't stop this famine. But he was sure about to work through it and in the midst of it. So because of this famine, this man, this wonderful man by the name of Elimelech, wanting to be a good provider for his family and take care of them, he moved from Bethlehem, Judah, to a place called Moab with his wife, Naomi, and his two sons, Malon and Kilian. Verse 2 says, the man's name was Elimelech and his wife was Naomi. Their two sons were Malon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem. They were, of, they were of the seed of Ephraim, one of Joseph's sons. Joseph had Manasseh and Ephraim. So he came from the seed of Joseph, from the, from the, from the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, which were Joseph kids. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they settled there. Sometimes you got to make a shift. Sometimes you got to make a change. Sometimes for God to do what he wants to do in your life, like in the case of Abraham, he told Abraham, leave the land of us to a land that I will show you. He said, leave this land. I'm taking you out of here, Abraham. I'm taking you someplace else. He uprooted me from the Bahamas. I know what it is to leave my home country, my hometown, where everything was familiar and brought me and plant me in the middle of a totally different nation. Watch this now. Then Elimelech died. I want you to pay attention because tragedy is going to hit this family. At first, this man, Elimelech, he is moving his family into a completely different country and, and a, a completely new nation so he could provide for his wife and his sons. And after they settle down into Moab, Elimelech dies, and Naomi was left with her two sons. So tragedy now is beginning to hit this family. They're beginning to experience the winds of adversity. The two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman named Orpah, and the other a woman named Ruth. But about 10 years later, watch this, about 10 years later, both Malon and Killian died. This left Naomi alone without her two sons or her husband. And this woman is living in a strange land among people that she was not raised with who had different traditions different customs than what she was accustomed to. And she's there all by herself with no family around her to fend for her. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. Said So Naomi and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. Think about this. Like, I mean, I would have had a million questions for God. Like, why did you wait until my husband and sons died to start blessing Bethlehem again? Now the place where we all left is thriving and everything's working out. Would it have been better? Can you imagine the questions Naomi had? Would it have been better if my husband would have just never left in the first place and just stayed and struggled? But he made the best decision as a man. He did, he did the best he could to take care and provide for his family. So now the place that they had left is now thriving and bustling with business and wealth and everything is on the up and up. And now Naomi realized, I got to get out of Moab and go back to familiar territory and go back to my family and my people that I was raised with because I need help. I can't do this by myself. It's okay to need help. It's okay sometimes to have to look
look and, and lean on other people to help you get through it. No one man is an island. The Bible says two are better than one for they'll get a good return for their labor. Now watch this. So Naomi and her daughter-in-laws, they got ready to leave Moab and return to her homeland. With her two daughters-in-law, she set out from, from the place where she had been living and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. So now the place where they had settled down, she have to uproot and go back to her roots, go back to Judah. And this is going to be tough because now her daughter-in-laws have a decision to make. Am I going to just leave everything now and travel with Naomi? And they were willing, it seemed like it. Verse 8 says, but on the way, Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, go back to your mother's homes, and may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. It's a good mother-in-law. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they all broke down and wept. Separation is always tough. No, they said, we want to go with you to your people. But Naomi replied, why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to other sons who could grow up to be your husbands, know my daughters. Return to your parents' homes, for I am too old to marry again. And even if it were possible, then I would have get married tonight and bear sons. Then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. Naomi didn't see the clear picture. And you and I have the benefit of just reading through this. But Naomi had to live through this. Naomi had to walk this thing out. She did not understand what God was about to do in her life and with her future. She couldn't see it. And so in her eyes, as far as she's concerned, God has raised his fist against me. Have you ever been in a place like that? When you said, God, why are you letting me to go through what I'm, why are you allowing me to suffer like this? Why are you allowing me to go through what I'm going through? Lord, help us, Jesus. I'm here to tell someone you're going to overcome adversity. You will understand it better by and by. This is where trust comes in. This is where you really got to just trust him and know the word says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Even what, even what's a, what may look like a blow, and it feels like it, and it's, the pain is real. Death is real. Her husband died, and then her two sons. I mean, her head must have been swirling with questions. I know she had to have some sleepless nights, laying on a pillow with tears rolling down her face sniffling in the dark saying God where are you I'm here to tell someone God has a plan since I heard a preacher said you got to trust him when you can't trace him trust in the Lord with all your heart lay not to your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths God is going to bring you out of this more than a conqueror we will pick this story up tomorrow as we get into the word, as we talk about, you will make a comeback. But before I go, I want to pray with you. Some of you are facing, some of you are dealing with adversity. The winds of adversity is blowing in your direction. You're having to make decisions. God knows what he's doing, saints. You're going to overcome. You are going to overcome. You may have to say goodbye to some people that you love. But trust him. God has your best interests at heart. He is working his behind the scenes. He is weaving. And he's going to blow your mind in the end. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy join our faith. With your wonderful people here on this morning. Dear God, touch them. Strengthen them. Encourage them. 
lift burdens that's on their shoulder. You see the winds of adversity is blown in their direction. Dear God, turn their situation around. Turn their situation around. Bring them out of what they are dealing with more than a conqueror. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Listen, saints, before you go, I want to I want to ask you this. I want you to become a partner with this ministry. If you've never given, or if you only gave one time, and you know this ministry, this morning prayer broadcast, the Thursday night live, the Sunday morning services, it's been a blessing in your life. We are asking you, partner with this ministry, partner with us. Pray about it and say, Lord, is this something you want me to do? Ask God to partner with us. What is a partner, Pastor Sean? A partner is somebody who's committed to standing with us as often and as much as they can. Give monthly if you can. Give weekly if you can. We cannot do this without you. God designed us to work together to fulfill and accomplish his will. God will bless your life for helping get this broadcast around the world. We love you. We will never take you for granted. In Jesus' name. To support the work of God, the preaching of the gospel, visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinder.net ministries you can also give through the ministry app many of you have downloaded the sean pinder ministries app amen you can give through that app as well you can also give through the ministry zell account the ministry zell email address is info at seanpinder.net you can also give through the ministry cash up account that address is the dollar sign sean pinder ministries you can also give through the ministry Venmo account. That address is at Sean Pender Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pender Ministries, P.O. Box 27. 26 McKinney, Texas 75070. Never forget, me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you. We appreciate you and thank you, our wonderful partners and viewing audience, for your support and your prayers. God bless you. See you again on tomorrow morning on another morning prayer broadcast.